The word ischemia means lack of blood supply to a part of the body. Ischemia may cause tissue damage due to the lack of oxygen and nutrients. A stroke is defined as an abrupt neurological outburst caused by impaired perfusion through the blood vessels to the brain. Understanding neurovascular anatomy is critical for studying the clinical manifestations of stroke. Two internal carotid arteries anteriorly and two vertebral arteries posteriorly control blood flow to the brain which is the circle of Willis. Ischemic stroke is caused by a lack of blood and oxygen to the brain, whereas hemorrhagic stroke is caused by bleeding or leaky blood vessels. Ischemic stroke is the most common type of stroke. Blocked arteries cause ischemic strokes. Arteries are the blood vessels that bring fresh blood and oxygen to the brain. Arteries can be blocked by a buildup of a fatty substance called plaque. Blood clots can also cause blockages. Blood clots sometimes form in the area where the plaque has formed in the artery wall. They can also travel from another part of your body to your brain. If an artery in the brain is blocked, the surrounding tissues won't get the oxygen and nutrients they need. This causes the neurons in your brain to die within minutes. Certain symptoms can occur when blood flow to brain cells is blocked. These symptoms often start suddenly and are easy to identify depending on where the blockage is in your brain. Symptoms may include drooping on one side of your face, dizziness, or loss of balance. Trouble seeing with one or both eyes. Slurred speech or trouble speaking. Feeling or looking weak on one side of your body, and a severe headache with no known cause. If you or a loved one show any of these symptoms, call an ambulance right away. The sooner you get treatment, the better your chance of recovery. The clinical presentation of stroke varies from patient to patient, but certain signs make it easily distinguishable. Here is a mnemonic faster, in which, F4 face, facial drooping or numbness on one side of the face. A4 arms, arm weakness on one side of the body. S for stability, inability to maintain balance and stay steady on one's feet that is dizziness. T for talking, slurred speech, inability to respond coherently, or other speech difficulties. E for eyes, changes in vision, including seeing double or partial or complete blindness in one or both eyes and lastly, R to react. Call emergency services immediately if you see any of these symptoms, even if symptoms go away. It's important to follow this faster approach to get better treatment for the patient. As we know, occlusion in brain arteries causes stroke. This occlusion is mainly due to a plaque or an atherosclerotic mass. There are two types of ischemic strokes, thrombotic and embolic. Thrombotic strokes are caused by a blood clot, thrombus, in an artery going to the brain. Embolic strokes occur when a clot that's formed elsewhere, usually in the heart or neck arteries, travels in the bloodstream and clogs a blood vessel in or leading to the brain, so the blood flow to the brain reduces, causing severe stress and untimely cell death or necrosis. Ischemic strokes can present as predefined syndromes as a result of decreased blood supply to specific parts of the brain that correlate with exam findings. This helps clinicians to predict which areas of the brain vasculature will be damaged. For example, if the middle cerebral artery is blocked, there will be inadequate blood supply to the region of the brain to which the middle cerebral artery supplies blood. So this is called middle cerebral artery infarction or MCA infarct. So by the morphology, ischemic stroke is classified into these six types. First, middle cerebral artery or MCA infarction. Next, anterior cerebral artery or ACA infarction, posterior cerebral artery or PCA infarction, next, vertebrobasilar infarction, cerebellar infarction, and last, lacunar infarction. Each infract present with different manifestation clinically, we will discuss about all of them in upcoming videos, for now just a quick idea how infract are given this nomenclature. Moving on, certain things can make you more likely to have a stroke. These are called risk factors. Some risk factors can't be changed. You are also at a higher risk of having a stroke if anyone in your family has had a stroke, you are more than 55 years old. You've had a stroke before, or you have certain genetic conditions. But you can change some of the factors that put you at risk of having a stroke. For example, smoking cigarettes can increase your risk for stroke. 
Other health conditions raise your risk for stroke, including high blood pressure, heart disease, high cholesterol, diabetes, peripheral artery disease, or untreated atrial fibrillation, a condition in which your heart beats in an irregular pattern. If you are overweight or obese, or eat a lot of food high in saturated fat or salt, your risk for stroke goes up. If you're having symptoms of stroke, you'll need several medical tests. Your healthcare provider will start with a physical examination. He or she will likely recommend special imaging tests like a CT or MRI scan. Once the diagnosis is confirmed and you found out type and location of stroke, you will need further blood test and plan treatment accordingly. Your treatment will depend on the size and location of your stroke. If you get to your healthcare provider quickly, you may be given a special drug to help dissolve the blockage that is causing your stroke. You may also be given aspirin or other drugs that affect the blood. You may need a procedure in which your healthcare provider places a special wire in your brain through a blood vessel in your leg, arm, or neck to help clear the blockage. Stroke can leave you with permanent disabilities. The faster you get treatment, the more likely you are to recover. To learn more about types of stroke and different treatment options including surgical procedure, please subscribe and support us.